Hello, Nevika here. Welcome to this next episode of Trails of Cold Steel 2. And we are doing bondings in Berehard. Last episode, oof, Rain got real hot and heavy with Alyssa. Too much bonding, I think. Better not do anything against Emma, Reen. We're keeping an eye on you. Well, I am. Reen is keeping two eyes somewhere. Okay, okay, okay. So, who's the next person to bond with? Nobody here. So... Here. Ba-boom. Fee, lovely little Fee who's missing a boot for some reason. Let's find out why. Uh, Fee? What's going on? Why are you sitting here wearing only one sock? The sole of one of my boots came off while I was walking, and now my foot kind of hurts. So I'm taking a break. Well, after all those boots have been through, I can't really blame them for giving up the ghost like that. Is your foot gonna be okay? Once I've rested a bit, sure. I'll get the boot fixed up after that. You can just keep walking. Oh. <laughs> Wait, how does she think she's gonna get to the tailor without footwear? Is she gonna roll down this hill? It's fee, it's very possible. Okay, foot's feeling better now. Off we go. Hold up, Fee. You're not actually planning on walking there with your foot like that, are you? Might as well. I'm used to this kind of stuff anyway. Well, maybe so, but you still shouldn't be walking around on it like that. What if you step on something sharp on the way? What do you want me to do then? <laughs> ah, guess I'll be the gallant knight here. <laughs> here we go. So, did it start hurting again? I'm fine. Just kinda amazed, really. I don't think anyone else would have offered a piggyback ride in that situation. Huh? Don't worry about it. Into the store we go, my steed. Sorry, but the Pony Express stops here. Upon reaching the tailor, Reen asked them to fix up P's shoe for her. They were told it would be a quick process, so they had a look around the store in the meantime. Oh hey! They've got Stregas here. You're pretty fond of this brand, aren't you? Sure am. Seems like they've only got formal wear here, though. Would have been up for buying some new sneakers if they had any. I don't see you prancing around in formal wear anyway, to be honest. How long have you been a fan? Since you were in Zephyr? The boss bought me a pair for helping out with something. That was the second present he gave me, in fact. Oh? What was the first, then? The name, Clausel. That's a present I'll never let go of, either. There's no one else in the world who can give me that, after all. I know how you feel. Dad welcomed me as a proper member of the Schwarzer family meant the world to me. So yeah, let's keep our appreciation for that close to our heart. Speaking of things from the past, I was actually reminded of the boss when you were giving me that piggyback ride. Huh? He did the same for me not long after bringing me into Zephyr. Stuff like that's what made him feel like he was actually my real dad. B. There's something else I realized too. You remind me of the boss, but you're not actually him in the end. Just like Class 7 isn't the same family that Zephyr was even though both are important to me. I'm not the same person I was back then either. I don't want to sit around and be protected all the time anymore. Yeah, that's right. We're all in this together, Fee. Supporting each other's the obvious way to go. Yep, and I'm gonna use what I learned from my old family to do just that. Thanks, Reen. <laughs> not at all. took a little more time before their order was ready, so the two wandered the store for a while longer. Once it was, they saw that Fee's shoes were as good as new. Yep, 
You guys and Zephyr are very different families, but you're both important to me. And I'll do whatever it takes to keep my family safe. Aww. I can't see anyone needing to protect Yuffie. You're awesome by yourself already. Okay, who else was around here? I know there's one around here. In the tavern, of course. Which is... Where? Not here? Oh, well, let's go to the gallery, yeah, since Milliam's right here. Oh, Milliam! <coughs> hmm, which one do I want? Hey, Milliam, never pictured you as the bookstore type. What are you looking for? I'm not! I just want a good book for making sweet stuff. After all our hard work, I thought it'd be nice to make a treat for everyone. Wow. That's really thoughtful of you. I'm sure the others would be thrilled. It's kind of surprising to hear that she thought this up out of the blue, too. <laughs> Just you wait. You guys are gonna love it. Whatever it is. No promises I won't eat it all up before you get the chance to try it, okay? It might be too delicious to resist. As thoughtful as she's being, I'm kind of nervous about letting her cook on her own. What do you say to letting me be your sous chef on this one? <laughs> if you want! But I get to order you around, and you can't get in my way or you will suffer the consequences! Deal? <laughs> you got it. No idea where that confidence is coming from, but now I can make sure she doesn't blow anything up. We should probably start by deciding what we want to make first. After some deliberation, the two settled on making an apple tart. They made a quick supply store. They made a quick supply stop in a store in Berea Heart, and then headed to the Courageous' kitchen. Rolled up their sleeves and got to work. Hi! -ya! Careful, Milliam. Look, this is how you're supposed to hold it. See? Aw, why are you always cramping my style? Cooking's all about heart, and I've got tons of that! Well, you're gonna stab me in the heart if you don't stop brandishing that kitchen knife like a deadly weapon. Ugh, my arm's going dead. Can I stop whisking now? Sure, if you don't want it to rise properly in the oven. Come on, stop whining and concentrate. And no tasting until it's done. Aw, fine, fine. Full speed whisking ahead! Great. Now we just need to wait for it to cool. Oh, I'm so excited! Is it ready yet? It's been less than a minute. Watching over and supporting Milliam proved to be no small task. Thankfully, the apple tart was successfully completed. Ooh. Yay! We're finally done! And look how nice it looks! It's really magical what can happen when you don't use salt instead of sugar. Aw, why'd you have to ruin the moment by bringing that up? Still, thanks for all the help. You're welcome. It was fun. This idea kind of came out of left field, though. When I think of you, I think of destruction, not creation. Any particular reason you decided to make something for a change? I don't know. I just... I feel... I just feel kind of... something? Like, it's hard to describe. But I've got this weird tightness in my chest that won't go away. I think it first showed up when I saw what happened to Keldon. It's got me all restless. I always feel like I've gotta do something. It doesn't matter what as long as I do it. I was hoping the feeling would go away when we caught Duke Alvarea, but that didn't happen. If anything, Yusuf's having to arrest his dad only made things worse. Any idea what I've got, Dr. Ryu? I know exactly what you've got, and it's not anything unusual. It's called sadness. Everyone feels it sometimes. But I guess this might be the first time you have. So that's what this is. <laughs> Neat. I had no idea. 
I've never felt like this before. It's kind of out of character for me, though. Personally, I think this might actually be a good thing. It's a sign that you're growing and, ma and maturing. As a person, I mean. Not as an intelligence agent. I'm growing? Sad things happen. It's a fact of life. But it's by overcoming those things and moving past them that we can grow as people. So don't be ashamed of how you're feeling. There's no reason to hide it if you're sad. You matter too much to do that to yourself. You really think so? <laughs> okay. I'm still not totally sure how to deal with how I'm feeling right now. But thanks for talking to me about it. Their sad conversation complete, Reed and Millian put the finished apple tart in the fridge to share with the rest of their friends later. Afterwards, they both left the Courageous and returned to Bereahard. I still can't believe that Millian hasn't felt a bunch of these things. Like, is she just a, a kid who's never felt all these things? Or is she, like, not a human? I don't know. Oh my god, I can't wait for the third game to come out. Thanks for the help, Reed! That probably would have been a big pain in the butt if you weren't there. And now we can treat everyone later! <laughs> okay, next up is who? Devils. I always think of Sir Devils. Oh, here we go. The Prince Sauce. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, Princess! Hime, Hime sama. <clears throat> it was seen they're about to hold mass over at the cathedral. I'm thinking of sneaking in kind of incognito, but. Hmm, something the matter? It's nothing, just pretend I didn't say anything. Oh, I'm trying to get some rest, Reen. You must be exhausted. She seems like she's got something on her mind. Would you mind if I joined you, your highness? I'd feel much more at ease if I at least escorted you to the cathedral. Just as a precaution, of, of course. What you mean? <laughs> Thank you so much for your concern. Shall we be off then? Seeing Boreahard's cathedral up close is always breathtaking. You've been to Boreahard before, haven't you? That's right. I have a number of noble acquaintances here, even. Speaking of which, today's mass seems to have attracted more of them than usual. It looks like it's intended as an occasion to mourn the losses suffered by Keldic. Oh. Judging by all the people I saw go in, it'll probably be a fairly large event. So it seems. I plan to attend as well, to offer my prayers to the market manager, but... No, it's nothing. Let's go inside, Reen. Hmm, wonder what's up. Tell us, Princess! And so Reen and Princess Alfin entered the cathedral to attend the mass currently being held. Of course, though they were careful to sit behind the majority of the attendees to avoid standing out. However, during the sermon I'm sure you've all heard by now of the terrible tragedy that took place in Celtic recently. In light of this, let us offer up our prayers for the people there. May Adios be with them all. Rest in peace, Otto. What's going to happen to us from here on out? I can't believe they actually arrested Duke Alvarea. Not to mention the fact that we've been re removed from the Alliance's jurisdiction. But why, though? I see no reason to accept the Imperial Army when our own army is still intact. <sighs> Duke Alvarez certainly has made a muck of things this time. Are these people for real? Are we supposed to be mourning for the people of Keldic? There's a time and place for self-pity and it sure as hell isn't now. Besides surely, besides surely Keldic was partly to blame for what happened too, no? I heard all about their belligerent attitude towards Duke Valoria. And yet he was arrested simply for teaching them a lesson? 
Disgraceful, I know. The beloved Empire certainly has been on the decline these past couple of years. I can't take much more of this. Just who in the world do you people think you are? Huh? Who, who dares to raise their voice during Holy Mass? Wait, I know that face. Princess Alfin? Hmm. How could you make light of what happened in Celtic? Do you genuinely believe that it's none of your concern? That Celtic deserved its fate? Is this how you treat your fellow Erebonians? Don't you realize that by putting aside such social labels, this tragedy could have been prevented? Your Highness. But maybe I'm not one to talk. I may have shared the same sentiments as you all had I continued to live my cozy life in Heimdall. I would have done litter other than pity them without making an attempt to truly understand the gravity of the matter. In the end, it would have just been another event on the long list of things to eventually forget. <laughs> but please, I beg of you, please realize that whether they are noble or commoner, Every life matters! The people who suffered in Celtic, who lost their lives because of this war, are no less important than any of us! Each and every one of them lived a life of their own and had a future ahead of them until it was ripped away! Your Highness... <laughs> Your Highness... Reen... So please, I ask anyone in disagreement with the Duke's arrest to go see Keldic for themselves. If that's not enough to convince you his arrest was the right thing to do, then by all means bring your complaints to me. I swear on the Arner household that I will listen to every single one of you in earnest. After Princess Alphen's speech, they left the cathedral that had turned deathly quiet. From there, Rena escorted her back to the airport. The entire way, she struggled to hold back her tears. Thank you, Reen. I've gotten a hold of myself now. Oh, how embarrassing it is to act out like that during a holy mass. I'm sure my brother would have been able to handle that situation much better. Prince Oliver would have handled that in his own way, sure. That doesn't make your actions any less worthy of respect, however. You don't think it was too much? I mean, when I, I mean, I mean it when I say that speech, that speech hit very close to home. That's why I'm sure some of the nobles there must have been impacted the same way. If anything, I'd say you've made me feel proud to be a member of the Empire than ever before. Did I? I'm sure when this war comes to an end, your words will be able to reach even more people, too. Until then, all we can do is keep fighting. <laughs> Thank you, Reen. Hearing you say that is such a relief. <laughs> Happy to help, Your Highness. Let's just focus on doing what we can for now, okay? Please don't forget that we're all here to support you. Thank you. After Reen escorted Princess Alphen to the Courageous, he headed back to town. Oof. That was deep. I like that she stood up. Surprised Reen didn't, but I guess he didn't want to make a scene in front of the princess. So good job, Reen. And I appreciated the princess's... What's it called? Her standing up for herself. Okay, let's let's go to the church. To the church. To Gaius. Gaius. 
It's good that we were able to put an end to the issue with Eustace's father. But the winds that blow through this nation grow more temp tempestuous. So I'm here to pray that they might finally calm at least a little. Could probably use a little prayer right now. I think I'll join you, actually. So this is kind of a weird request, but while we're here, would you mind teaching me how people pray in Nord? Sure. Shall we move up a little then? That should do. Praying like this kind of makes me feel in tune with the wind as well. <laughs> well, it is the traditional Nord way of prayer, after all. They say that doing so calls forth the voices of the spirits and adios in order to rid the world of disaster. Of course, how that actually works isn't really explained. <laughs> I see. It's kind of frustrating to know that all we can really do now is pray. Rune? Well, this war has brought about so many sacrifices at this point. Whether it be the innocent victims or the soldiers who fell in battle. But in the end, there's nothing we can do to stop that. Celtic's proof enough of that. That's why I can't help but feel so frustrated at myself. I understand what you mean. I felt the same during my time in Nord. There's simply nothing we can do in the face of such a powerful storm. But that doesn't mean we should stand by idly as we watch the destruction. I know that. But it's just... No one person can make their way through life without help. No one can cover every need, every eventuality. But that's okay, because mankind shows its greatest strengths through banding together. Huh? Those are the words of an old traveling priest who used to visit Nord long ago. In the end, there's only so much we can do alone. However, by accepting this and working together, people can overcome any trial they face. My time with Class Sevens led me to believe that this is what he meant. Huh. You're not alone, Rain. You have me and the rest of Class 7, not to mention many other comrades with you. So let's do what we can to prevent any more tragedies like Keldic from happening. You're always so confident, guys. <laughs> Maybe I should take a few pointers from you. This doesn't change the fact that we've got a tough road ahead of us, though. But knowing I got all of you by my side makes me confident that we'll pull through. I feel very much the same. Let's walk down that road together, then, and take back our home. Right. Hey, that's a first. Finally, someone gives Rain confidence. Rain's always making everyone feel better. You know why? Because Gaius never... he's never down. He's never sad. He's never depressed. He's never insecure. He's always chill, confident, positive. He's the only one that really, like, I don't know, like, helps out Rain. Rain's always, like, always, uh, um, fixing the fires everywhere, but Gaius is the only dude that, that puts out Rain's fire, you know? So, that's a good friend right there. That traveling priest's words live on within me to this day. We can't do much alone, but that should never stop us from trying. If for no other reason than to prevent what happened in Keldic from ever happening again. That was awesome. Thank you, Gaius. Okay, I think we can do Sarah. Whoa, that sounded bad. <laughs> think we can do Sarah? I bet Rain wishes he can do Sarah. Where is the, um, where, where is this? The tailor. Well, let's just go from here. Gosh, I'm so bad. What the hell? Maybe it's at the tailoring. 
No, Beefy. <laughs> oh, in the hotel, in the inn, of course. Ugh. <laughs> there she is. Hey there, Reen. Oh, hi there, instructor. Are you feeling a little better now? <laughs> feeling just fine, thank you very much. Though I might have overdone it a bit against those guys. Still, at least I was able to see you kids off like a good teacher should. No regrets here. Instructor. Aw, oh, come on. Don't give me that look. I might be here resting, but you look like you, could sh you should get some rest yourself. She's always dodged having to tell us much about her past, but she might actually be making an exception this time. Would you mind if I stayed here and rested a bit with you? I'd even be happy to join you for a drink or something. Water, I guess. Really? <laughs> you're gonna be rolling into bars, chatting up the ladies like a pro soon with the way you're doing. The way you're going. Just take a seat there. I'll get you a little something fancier than water on me. Whew. This hard liquor fights back. Gotta pace myself better. Can't chug them because they're too strong. I'm three sheets to the wind before I know it. It's better than nothing, but I'll take a good beer or cider any day. <laughs> I'm struggling with this cocktail, personally. Feels like I'll get drunk from it even though there's no alcohol in it. Well, hey, that's just one of the appeals of drinking. I'll make sure to teach you how to savor it once you're old enough. Same way both my superior and my friend did for me back in the day. Was that back when you were a part of the Northern Jaegers? Yep. Granted, they both kicked the bucket a long time ago. Oh, um, sorry. <laughs> this operation brought back a lot of memories. Some of them bad, but plenty of good ones too. Getting by back, getting by back then was a real struggle. But like, no matter what we did, nothing ever got any better. You came from North Ambria, didn't you? Seems like life there was a lot more brutal than I could ever imagined. Would you mind if I asked you just when you decided to join the Corps? Couldn't tell you exactly when. It felt like as soon as I knew what was going on around me, I had a gun in my hands. Not like there was much else you could do to earn a living around there. They say it was a nice place till the North Ambrian disaster struck around 20 or so years ago. I only got back once every few... I only go back once every few years now, mainly to pay my respects. I see. It was the kind of place where death would follow you wherever you went, really. And I wasn't any exception to that. I've lost many people who were important to me. One day they were there, the next they were gone. It wasn't until around six years ago that Beatrix, well, Colonel Beatrix back then, saved me. After that, I cut all my ties and headed down the path to becoming a bracer. You all know the rest after that. I guess we do. I don't even know what to say. I can't imagine leading a life like that. <laughs> yes, indeed. You won't find many heroines as tragic as me. But, well, what happened at RX4 made me realize something. Turns out I hadn't completely to cut my ties to that place. Crossing blades with old comrades was more painful than I expected. Maybe it's selfish of me to say, but I wish it weren't. <laughs> Guess this just shows that I've still got a long way to go as an instructor. There's still so much I want to teach you so you can make it through all this, but... I probably wasn't cut out for the job to begin with, you know? I have to respectfully disagree with you there, Instructor. We've learned a lot from you, both individually and as a class. Things that you didn't specifically try to teach us either. We learned those simply through observing your, your actions. Like what? Take what happened at Oryx Fort. Your actions taught us that fighting for the people and country you love can be painful at times. We saw that in your willingness to cross blades with those you once knew. You showed us what it means to be truly determined. At least that's what I got out of it. And I'm certain we'll one day have to show that very same determination. Huh. That's why we'd like you to continue teaching us from here on out. In fact, we need you to. I can't see us taking back Thor's without your experience and guidance. 
let alone getting through the crow. Wow, look at you, Reen. <laughs> the teachers become the students. Talk about cliches. I get it, though. If you're that insistent, then I'll make sure you all get the best education possible. As your instructor and as your comrade. We'll drink to that. Aww. You can bet I'll keep fighting with you guys, both as your instructor and as part of Class 7. Still, I'm really impressed when I look at how you much you've grown in such a short period of time. In more ways than one, teacher. Mm -hmm. Anyways, that was nice. Okay, so this is where I will stop. Obviously, the last, um, the last, uh, month is with Yusis, and that's where we gotta go anyway for the main story. So, in the next episode, we'll finally continue the main story, bond with Yusis, and then see where we go from there. And hopefully Yusis is okay, I hope right. he is. I know he's probably having the, the roughest time right now. We'll see how that goes. Again, I enjoyed the bondings of this one got through a lot um, but yeah they were they everyone needs help right now and I'm glad to be able to help them in any kind of way I can anyways thank you guys so much for watching this episode I hope you enjoyed it if you did please give the video a like it lets me know you liked it comment below your thoughts and share the video with your friends and subscribe to this channel for more episodes into the series until the next episode you guys take a lot of care Jenny.